Enthalpy of Reactions, lecture number 24. So now as we finish up this first section about thermodynamics or thermochemistry, we're going to finish talking about a little bit more about this heat or Q. Remember if the pressure isn't changing or the volume isn't changing, we can relate the Q or the change in energy equal as approximately this change in enthalpy. Right, so let's talk a little bit more about this enthalpy. <coughs> enthalpy is sort of the measure of the heat um, within an atom or molecule. Right? Since that's very hard to measure, or it's impossible to measure that absolute value, we've come up with what we call an arbitrary scale, developed based on what we call the enthalpy of formation, or the standard enthalpy of formations where we're taking a set of standard conditions which are different than this STP. The standard conditions here are one molar concentration, one mole of a substance, and 25 degrees Celsius. So <clears throat> this sort of standard enthalpy of formation is our reference from all other enthalpy expressions. So <clears throat> the standard enthalpy of formation is delta H not F is the heat change that results from one mole or when one mole of a compound is formed from its element at a pressure of one atmosphere and again at 25 degrees Celsius or 298K. <clears throat> right? So therefore any element or anything in its elemental state has a standard enthalpy of formation value of zero. Right? So by definition if we're forming a compound or a molecule from its elements, those elements have to be equal to zero. So we can look, see here, delta H for a formation for O2 is zero, but for O3, the non-elemental form, we have a value. Delta H of formation for carbon and graphite, which is its most stable form, is zero, where a diamond has a different value. <clears throat> right? Typically here, our delta H of formations are given in units of kilojoules per mole. Um, but and we generate a large table of this. In fact, there's a, a book in my, my office in the library that's got page upon page upon page of these delta H of formation values. Right. So you have to look at a table. The table here in your book is actually in the back, um, or it'll be given to you in class. Either way, there those values you, you can't really determine. You have to look them up in a table. Right? So just like this enthalpy of formation, it, we're doing a chemical reaction, we can then expand this based on those enthalpy of formations and to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction, the standard enthalpy of a reaction. Again, standard conditions here, one atmosphere, 25 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> so if we look at this general reaction here, AA plus BB goes to C, C plus DD, then we can say the change in enthalpy is going to be the enthalpy present in the products minus the enthalpy present in the reactants. So just like always, the change is the final state minus the initial state. So that's going to be equal to the sum of the enthalpies of the products minus the sum of the enthalpies of the reaction. Or we can see down here that way. <clears throat> this N and M is just the coefficients in front of those. So in the first one it's C times C, D, A, and B. <clears throat> so we, from these table values we can then calculate at standard state what this enthalpy change of the reaction will be. Or we can use this Hess's law. So when reactants are converted to products, the change in enthalpy is going to be the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or in a series of steps. Therefore, if we can we know the enthalpy of several these different stepwise reactions, then if the sum of those reactions equals the reaction we're interested in, then the sum of those th thermodynamic values, those delta H values are going to be equal to the that reaction. This is true because, remember, enthalpy is a state function. So it doesn't matter how we go from reactants to products, it just matters that we do. Now we're looking at the quantity at the products minus the quantity at the reactants. So we can do this in a series of steps. <clears throat> so that's the basic theory behind it. After this is just calculation. So let's look at this first example where we calculate the enthalpy, standard enthalpy of a reaction for this reaction here. 
So let's, this reaction <clears throat> is known as thermite. Right? We take aluminum with iron oxide, get the reaction started, we form aluminum oxide and iron. Right? Very exothermic, <coughs> gonna generate a lot of heat. Right? We can calculate the delta H of these this reaction by taking the sum of the enthalpies of the reactants, or the products, excuse me, minus the sum of the enthalpy of the reactants. So this equals to delta H of the reaction is one times the standard enthalpy of formation for the aluminum oxide, plus two times the standard enthalpy of formation for iron. Add those two together, minus the sum of two times the standard enthalpy of formation for aluminum, plus one times the standard enthalpy for aluminum or iron oxide, excuse me. Remember though that this things in their elemental state are going to be zero, so the iron and the aluminum both have a standard enthalpy of formation of zero. The other two values we'd have to look up in a table, and I've done that already here. So we're gonna take one times the enthalpy of formation of aluminum oxide, which is negative 1669.8 kilojoules per mole, and subtract off from that a negative 822.16 kilojoules per mole. <clears throat> so we end up with a enthalpy of this reaction being a negative 847.64 kilojoules. Right? The number, remember these numbers in front are the number of moles that react, so we end up with just kilojoules for our reaction. <clears throat> right? So it's fairly straightforward, always sum of products minus the sum of the reactants. When we look at Hess's law, it becomes a little bit more complicated. <clears throat> so let's calculate the standard enthalpy formation of C CS2 as a liquid right? using these three reactions. So first we have to remember the reaction that we're interested in. The standard enthalpy of formation is we're forming one mole of that compound from its elements in their elemental form. So that gives us carbon, its elemental form is graphite, plus sulfur, the elemental form is a rhombic sulfur. So and we need two of those. So the reaction we're interested in is this one here. So then we have to sum up those other reactions above to get that. <coughs> so if we look at the first one, we want carbon as graphite as a reactant. That's true in the first case. And we only want one of them. There's one there. So that we're going to leave that reaction alone. In the second reaction, we want two sulfurs as a rhombic, so we're going to have to multiply this second reaction by two, right? which means we have to multiply the delta H value by two. So down here we have 2S rhombic plus down 2O2 goes to 2SO2 with the delta H value of two times its original value of negative 296.1. The bottom reaction on the here we have we want to form CS2, so we have to reverse that reaction. So if we reverse the, that reaction, right, now the things that were products become reactants, and if it was an exothermic reaction, it becomes an endothermic reaction. So by reversing that, we get CO2 goes to 2SO2, goes to what we want, CS2, it's a liquid, plus 3O2, gives us now the in reverse of that reaction with delta H is a positive 1072 kilojoules. So again, we can then add these up, things that are on opposite sides of the arrow, we can cancel out, just like when we were doing the balancing of redox reactions. Everything else falls down like our Plinko chips. Right? So we, we see that when we do this, we get the reaction of, we get the result of carbon as graphite plus two sulfur in the rhombic form goes to C S2 as a liquid, which is the reaction we were interested in. So if we added up those three reactions to get that chemical reaction, we then have to add up the three delta H values to get the delta H value of this new reaction. We see that we end up with an 86.3 kilojoules. <coughs> right? So the difference, we're still always calculating the delta H of these reactions. We're just doing it one of two ways where we look at either the <clears throat> looking at the products minus reactants or using Hess's law to sum up, taking advantage of this enthalpy as a state function. Dad, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs>